In near Liachan Niemba, Tugu rifle the FN Sulanacha done a troopy. The Trevsha Shiachan of Sakango, Rudda Horla Gahanov, Agus Nurkur Moron Kurila Aston Kahlana Detala Machan in me Anner Nidek Shaskahain. Ach, the Tribloid attacked. Quick V Dargion in Mehev, Honig Kahlan Elegudi in Congo. Wie eine Kette sei dort Touristel Ella Arke eg Uchtran Chambe e Gianter Katanga, von an Gendarmerie Stura, a gesie de Corgunne into Katanga, le schön heute alle kontier. You knew it was an amateur outfit that was going against it was very professional. They were being paid for by by the the the, the, the Katangi's army or the government basically there. Hol ne no schön ente ai bricht rum punch. We see our IMAC of Gachside or Touristal Bon and Hawal, a Xayibert on Gyanter. There was a likelihood of 31% casualties in the Operation Rum Punch. We're told to be ready for Rivali at 4 o'clock in the morning, that the company had been tasked with taking over the Gendarmerie headquarters. Dire election I briefed. Honisha near Dua or Winter Katanga, a Xkuru Griacher Valla Ko Hefach Tule. Nor squeal a few urchur wine, ach near war and rash in a wad. Mercenaries, what were shipped out, a lot of them were back in within a couple of weeks again. Operation Mortar kicked off early in the morning of the 13th of September. Marquitin I briefed, Eshiuk Barantas the Rawal Uchtaran Wise Chambe, Homal Saiduri Tourist Lagas Corliori Achtranche, on Melig than Hudis Mo. Either and all lean, Crusaiduri or Hompontas A, and Triacacuigo Catlon, Fuistur Canford Pat Quinlan, Gobalia Bug Minadorich de Darabanum Jadoville. Vishidan Hon En Sironic Belgacher, V. Fosan, a husband. We saw the last of C Company coming out of Jadoville as we went in. So they were after cutting the numbers from 300 to 150 odd. So we didn't stand much of a chance at all. We were sent in to protect the Belgians, who didn't want protection. Because the reason that the Swedes and C Company left it was because of the hostility towards them. Ach dort in Nordehe on Gian Chahru in Elizabethville, gar hord on Kompontus van Achsen oit Narausheid. Ho Quinlan ordu dan a fear a good cousin tea, a yangnu. They were preventing us from any movement at all, and this type of standoff went on for maybe two or three days, not allowing us freedom. In Elizabethville, near of Adagar Umpig Ibriot Mortar, Stachin a Kugga. Mario Tree Hydur Ernox a Trid. In Jadoville, we drug scale at Fanachter Hanford Pat Quinlan. We were saying mass, and three trucks drove in full of troops. They thought they had nothing to do, only to take over our camp. But one of our sergeants, Sergeant John Monaghan, maybe he wasn't a good Catholic, but he wasn't at mass. And he saw what was happening. He jumped into the machine gun trench, and he fired a few bursts over their heads. That more or less saved us. They have the fellas at mass time to regroup more or less, to get into their trenches and, and, and get defending the place. You know, the whole lot of them above, no weapons, most of them, you know. A couple of hours after then, all hell broke loose. They started to put fire in our direction and we returned it. Lan and Tunsi Arai, their family. Vinafir, in a drinchy. Britta if we hurry in the Africa. Then our water and electricity supplies were cut off after the evening of the first day. And whatever water was stored, it was stored in any kind of a container, including the baths in some of the villas that we, we had allocated to us by the people from civilian procurement. And in one particular case, somebody decided to have a bath in, in the water. And uh, that's finished that with drinking water. Unshin, Bagart Ella, Honix Guard Etalon Katanga Kik Scradiel in a dro, Exquila Ravuma Guard the Lorf Winter Hussanty and Compontish. 
there was a soldier here, he said, tell me, will we ever get out of here alive, he said. And he reassured the poor devil. He was afraid, he was, he basically he was afraid and he was worrying about his future. Erin Cahru Law de Van Four, Honig Scale Grand Saiduri Touristal, Agus Winter Katanga, Agira Sus Korica Ider Vartula Canfort Quinlan, Agus Gamach Force of Four Inta, or a Valach, Tevish de Gahubla Urichweg. They looked for a ceasefire to pick up their dead, which Pat Quinlan agreed to. And uh, when they had their dead all picked up, they broke the ceasefire. The Bugnach Shachten Katafui Lager at Jadoville. Agus vien scar det lan katangach fosagunsi, ach anish vien hernig da ragert len an narim hain. When things were getting tough, uh, they weren't getting the better of us. They looked for another ceasefire. So immediately then, our company commander Pat Quinlan got on to headquarters in Elizabethville. He was told that there was ceasefire talks going on and everything was going very well. I suppose he thought then, well, if I don't agree to this, well, then it's going to affect him back in Elizabethville. So he did agree to it. Dumping go iroch torhala rash, Muriel or fiachfer in the Katangig, a via quinal green dangan or rid lufira, on ten valachistach savalia. Then I remember seeing this black uh, minister or whatever he was. Next thing, Pat Quinlan was sent for. And he was told that we were being taken prisoners. Now, to be taken a prisoner during a ceasefire is against everything that the Geneva Convention ever stood for. A ceasefire is a ceasefire. But then again, they broke it again. When eventually they took us, they, could, they wouldn't believe that none of us were killed. They actually went around poking and holes and, and loose air to see what was what the bodies there. You know, it's hard to believe after five days, nobody was killed. That's the way it was. We were prisoners then for about six weeks. We were brought down from Jadaville to Camp Massart for a, a negotiation about our release and trading over Katangi's prisoners held elsewhere by the UN. There was no negotiation worthwhile. We were loaded on the buses again and took us out to a place called Enzilo One Camp. The most of the people that came out were women and children roaring for blood and Irish flesh. And uh, the guards wouldn't worry too much at first. But then machetes and panga knives started to appear. So we were moved into Colwesi to a compound which later became a UN compound in itself. Then on the 25th of October, we were told to go on a sightseeing tour again on the buses. But it was kind of prearranged that we weren't coming back. The Katangi soldier that was driving the bus, I would sit to the driver's left. And the others were that if there was any sign of them bringing us back, a good hefty fellow beside me, he would lift your man out of the driver's seat, and I would move in. I would just reach in and grab the steering wheel, sit in, and go through the roadblocks. But we were exchanged, and we didn't have to. We headed in to where there was an old airport, and uh, that was the first we saw of UN vehicles. There was Katangis on one side, and UN at the other. We were debussed and fell in. The Katangis were debussed and fell in. They, we marched up one side and they marched down the other side. And we were loaded onto trucks and taken back to Leopold Farm and allocated very good accommodation inside the cars, <laughs> full of mosquitoes. But at least we could say we were free, you know. Agus ar dera, vise hart. Agus dil etlán leis an chéad chuid gun triach a cúigú cahlán ar valia clia. Ach tréis na fáilte criúla o chomráidí cárd agus clán. Hána cúlnas. Agus an sin, hosa an chaint. We actually got a cool reception back home because we surrendered. They didn't know the situation. They didn't know how it happened. They didn't know there was a ceasefire in place. They just thought we came out and surrendered. 
Day Company were looked down upon for many, many years, you know, 46 years. Agus Muinter na Heron ag Trid ag Jadoville. For Dag Hammerschold, Rooney na Nashun Ainta, boss i Dimpish de Etelain, agus air a Valach Chuygan Rodeis, le idir vartu i yena le Uchtaran Chambe. Daharig Shasaf na Nashun Ainta, Hardiha. Yaul an Rooney ganiavach u tant, gan nu saitak siad nart, gan dara a chur laskara katanga, on gongo. Fadis a vi fir an triach a seo kathlain san air a malachig an kongo. The Orcharos Squila in Elizabethville. We went on to uh, Leopoldville, the capital. It was then we were told that there was a lot of trouble in Elizabethville. And we had to get, we got uh, absolution on the, on the tarmac from our chaplain before we got on the plane. And when we were on the plane, we had to change from our, our khaki uniform into our bush greens. And we had to break open boxes of ammunition and load up and everything like that. Because we didn't know. Who, what we were going to do when we got there, whether we'd even be able to land or not. At Elizabethville, preparing to land, one of the engines on the plane was knocked out from ground fire by the gendarmerie. They counted 40 puncture holes in the fuselage. There was chaos on the plane because people were jumping left, right and centre and didn't know where to go. Some people were even lying on the floor of the plane. But of course, I thought in my wisdom was I'd get my helmet, scrunch myself up as small as possible and sit on it. So I made myself as small a target as possible, which turned out to be a good idea because consequently, later on in years, I got married and had five children. So I kind of uh, protected my assets, as the fella says. We eventually landed, and there was fuel flying all over the place. But that plane had to be unloaded at the double. The biggest fear the Yanks had was us wearing hobnail boots, which would cause sparks on the tarmac. And we could have been involved in an inferno, but luckily it didn't happen. 